Now you can get that room and ride in the first wide small car. Today, we are highlighting 10 of the worst cars from the 1970s. New emissions and safety rules, the 1973 oil crisis, and fierce competition from overseas shook the industry to its core. Automakers scrambled to adapt, often cutting corners in design and materials. This led to some of the most notorious and problematic vehicles ever to hit the road. But amidst these automotive misadventures, one car stood out, not just for its flaws, but for a deadly secret that turned it into a ticking time bomb on wheels. Stay tuned as we will uncover the shocking story of a car that could literally explode upon impact. So let's get started. Let's go for a drive. Vega is getting quite a reputation as a great little sports car. And as you can see, it's quite deserving. Number 10, 1971, Chevrolet Vega. The 1971 Chevrolet Vega was definitely one of the worst cars ever. Even though it was promoted as the car of the year and had a cheap starting price of just $2,090, it turned out to be a real headache. The engine had a habit of overheating, causing expensive repairs that cost more than what you paid for the car. On top of that, the body of this car didn't handle the weather well. It rusted super quickly, and in some extreme cases, it just fell apart. Adding to the issues, the transmission liked to give up way too soon. They used cheap materials to keep the costs down, and it showed. To put it in perspective, $2,090 in 1971 would be roughly equivalent to about $13,000 today after adjusting for inflation. However, that meager price did not reflect the quality of this car. The 1971 Chevrolet Vega went from being the car of the year to one of the most troublesome and disappointing cars ever made by an American company. Its reputation took a big hit. They're trading in bigger cars for it. Uh, they've discovered they didn't need most of their big car. Number 9. 1975 AMC Pacer The 1975 AMC Pacer surely holds a prominent place among the weirdest cars of that era. With its wide body and extensive glass, it looked like it was pulled straight from a sci-fi comic. This car was nothing if not unique, turning heads and raising eyebrows with its futuristic design. But the Pacer's journey wasn't just about looks. It faced criticism for its mechanical reliability. While not every Pacer suffered from these issues, they were notable enough to tarnish its reputation. Under the hood, the Pacer started with a 232 cubic inch six-cylinder engine, later upgraded in models. Performance and build quality received mixed reviews with some owners less than thrilled. Priced around $3,500 in the 1970s, equivalent to about $17,000 today, the Pacer's value now varies. Some see it as a collector's item, while others remember the less favorable aspects handling and interior finishes? Again, opinions were divided. The Pacer's unique design was not matched by its functionality for some, leading to a less than stellar reputation in the automotive world. Despite its mixed legacy, the AMC Pacer remains a fascinating piece of automotive history. It's a testament to the era's willingness to push design boundaries for better or worse. The Pacer's story is just one chapter in our exploration of the 1970s worst cars. Yeah! Now this is what I call fast food! I had me a car like this and I would get in it, take off, and I wouldn't stop till I was someplace else. Number 8. 1973 Stutz Blackhawk The favorite of none other than Elvis Presley is the 1973 Stutz Blackhawk, a car that didn't hold back when it came to luxury and extravagance. With a design reminiscent of 1930s cars, but an enormous length of around 19 feet, the Blackhawk was pure extravagance on wheels. Its interior was the epitome of excess, adorned with Connolly leather, maple and birchwood details, Australian lamb's wool carpets, and even ermine fur lining in the trunk. Even more eye-catching was its price of $30,000 in 1971. That was almost 10 times the average annual salary in the U.S. What's worse, its expensive Lear AM-FM 8-track audio system and all the other luxuries made the Blackhawk one of the most expensive cars in the world. Undoubtedly, the Blackhawk was a vehicle reserved only for the deepest pockets. Nowadays, $30,000 from 1971 would be around $210,000 today, adjusted for inflation. The ride, smooth and stable. The steering is responsive, with a firm view of the road. Number 7, 1971 Pontiac Grand Prix. The 1971 Pontiac Grand Prix celebrated for its design and luxury, faced significant setbacks with the onset of the 1973 oil crisis. With a suggested starting price of $3,850, which equates to approximately $27,000 today, its large size and fuel-inefficient V8 engines were out of sync with the era's shift towards smaller, more economical vehicles. This mismatch, along with its heavy build, 
negatively impacted both its fuel efficiency and agility, diminishing its appeal in a market increasingly favoring compact cars. Compounding its struggles, the Grand Prix's attempt to balance luxury with performance was challenged by stricter emissions regulations, leading to reduced power and driving satisfaction. As a result, it faced stiff competition from more efficient domestic and foreign models, eroding its market share. These factors collectively contributed to the Grand Prix's reputation as one of the 1970s more disappointing vehicles, reflecting the broader challenges faced by the American auto industry during this transformative era. Two different body shapes, each with three power options. Number six, Morris Marina. The Morris Marina, launched in the early 1970s, quickly gained notoriety as one of the decade's worst cars due to its numerous shortcomings. Designed to compete with popular models like the Ford Cortina, the Marina was hastily pushed into production by British Leyland, resulting in a car that was underdeveloped from the start. Its design was considered outdated, lacking the style and innovation that were becoming standard in the automotive industry. Owners frequently faced a range of problems from minor irritations to major mechanical failures. The build quality was inconsistent, with common issues including rust, electrical faults, and poor fit and finish. The engines, though varied, were often underpowered and inefficient, failing to meet the performance expectations of the era. These issues, exacerbated by labor disputes and quality control problems at British Leyland, cemented the marina's reputation as a symbol of the struggles faced by the British car industry in the 1970s. It's uh, one of the problems with these imports. Oh, this isn't an import, no siree. This is a Chevrolet Chevette. Number five, Chevrolet Chevette. The Chevrolet Chevette, introduced in the mid-1970s, is often remembered as one of the worst cars of the decade. Largely due to its underwhelming performance, lackluster build quality, and minimalistic design. Designed as a response to the oil crisis of the 1970s and the growing demand for fuel-efficient compact cars, the Chevette aimed to compete with the influx of small, economical imports flooding the American market. However, in its pursuit of fuel efficiency and affordability, Chevrolet made significant compromises in other areas. The Chevette was equipped with small, underpowered engines that struggled to provide adequate performance. This lack of power was particularly noticeable on highways and during acceleration, making the driving experience generally uninspiring and at times frustrating for drivers used to more robust American cars. The car's construction was often seen as cheap, with a Spartan interior that lacked the comfort and features consumers expected, even in budget models. The use of low-cost materials led to problems like rapid wear and susceptibility to rust, diminishing the vehicle's longevity and appeal. As a result, Despite its initial popularity due to its low cost and fuel efficiency, the Chevette's legacy is marred by its shortcomings, reflecting the challenges faced by American automakers in adapting to a changing automotive landscape. America's modern gas mileage champ. Just want to use your payphone. It'll drive you happy. If you can afford a car, you can probably afford two Gremlins. I love you. Number four, AMC Gremlin. It's time for another one from AMC. Undoubtedly, this is one of the cars with the strangest designs of all time. It was built with poor quality materials, and despite being conceived as a subcompact, it used mechanical parts intended for larger cars in its production. The result? A kind of Frankenstein with a chopped off rear end that was only in production between 1970 and 1978. Additionally, this caused weight distribution problems, complicating handling, as well as issues with the suspension and steering. The mockery and negative response from the public were so strong at the time that various magazines and automotive critics included it in their lists of the worst cars. The average price of an AMC Gremlin in the 1970s varied depending on the year and specific model. In the early 1970s, the selling price of an AMC Gremlin was approximately $1,999. Adjusted for inflation, this price would be around $7,800 today. My car! You used to deliver pizzas in this car? Secret pizzas? Incredible, and it's mine. Take a closer look at the new Mustang II. Number 3. 1974 Ford Mustang II The 1974 Ford Mustang II marked a low point for what was otherwise an iconic muscle car nameplate. Based on the ill-fated Pinto platform, the Mustang II represented an attempt to downsize the brand for the era of fuel crises. Starting prices began around $3,300, which would equate to just over $21,500 today. However, buyers found little reason to send their money to Ford based on the underwhelming results. Where the original Mustang delivered style and power in spades, the Mustang II had neither. Strangled by emissions equipment and built upon a subpar Pinto foundation, even the V8 models struggled to reach 130 horsepower. 
The base inline six managed a paltry 105 horsepower. As a result, performance was lethargic and acceleration felt more like a Yugo than a proper sports car. And that's the Brooklyn with safety as the most important design factor. Dramatic styling lets you... Number two, 1975 Brooklyn SV1. The 1975 Brooklyn SV1 seemed to have all the ingredients for success. Iconic gullwing doors, flashy styling, and a focus on safety. But what resulted was an automotive debacle for the ages. Conceived by entrepreneur Malcolm Bricklin as the safety vehicle of the future, the SV1 boasted massive 5 mile per hour impact bumpers, a rollover cage, and vertically opening doors weighing over 100 pounds each. However, all that safety equipment, combined with a plastic body, ended up weighing the car down excessively. With a sticker price of $9,980, over $50,000 today, the underpowered V8 simply could not move the heavy brick adequately. The build quality was atrocious due to the unrefined use of fiberglass and plastics. Reliability was a joke, with issues like tiny radiators causing constant overheating. In the end, only around 3,000 bricks were ever produced between 1975 and 1976. It represented an automaker completely over its head. While innovative with its many safety-focused ideas, the Bricklin SV1 was one of the least well-executed car designs in history. Come on, tell us what's going on! Goodbye to a lot of extra servicing. Number 1. Ford Pinto Finally, we get to our exploding car, the infamous 1971 Ford Pinto. It's one of the most dangerous and defective cars ever produced. With an initial price of less than $2,000, Ford managed to sell almost 400,000 units in its first year. However, that came at the expense of safety. The Pinto gained notoriety due to serious flaws that turned it into a rolling bomb. Its lightweight body offered very little protection in case of an accident, easily crumpling, but the worst part was the placement of its fuel tank just behind the rear axle, ensuring that any rear-end collision would turn the car into a fiery explosion. Estimates by Mother Jones attribute between 500 and 900 burn deaths to Pinto crashes, who would not have been seriously injured if the car had not burst into flames. Studies showed that fixing these defects would have cost only a few dollars more per vehicle, but Ford chose not to do so based on a calculation of lives versus costs. Subsequent legal proceedings revealed the company's complete disregard for the safety of its customers. Today, less than $2,000 from 1971 would be roughly equivalent to about $13,000. However, no amount of money can compensate for the loss of human lives due to Ford's greed and negligence with the Pinto. Which of these cars do you think is the absolute worst? Were there any that did not make the list that you think should be on here? Drop your thoughts in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, please watch the next one. And if you're feeling extra friendly today, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. From all of us here, thank you for watching.